What's going on, y'all? Uh, good morning to some of y'all and good afternoon to some of y'all. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started in about, I want to give it about five more minutes. Um, this is a P5 and up exclusive call. So any platinum 5,000 and up are more than welcome to be on this call. Um, so, you know, go ahead and reach out to them individually. Make sure that everybody's up, awake, and active. Um, and this is going to be a, a great way to start the day. All right, so... Like I said, in the next few minutes, we'll go ahead and begin. Remember, this is we did a Platinum 2000 call before. Now, this is specifically a call for Platinum 5000s, right? Chairman's loading specifically. So make sure that every Platinum 5000 in your organization, whether it be one, 20, 1,000 of them, go ahead and reach out to them and make sure that they're, nothing that they're doing right now should be more important than this.
our family, uh, do me a favor. If you can hear me, uh, drop a one in the chat and then we'll go ahead and start, man. So if you can hear me, uh, if my sound is good, drop a one. Um, this is gonna be, since it's a smaller call, if at any point it cuts off or you can't hear me, I put the little captions too. But if at any point you cannot hear me, just say something. I'll try to disconnect from the Wi-Fi or whatever I gotta do um, and repeat anything that I have to say just so that you guys can get this information, okay? But, um, this is a quick mic check before we begin. All right, so it should be good. <clears throat> okay, cool, perfect. So, you know, good morning to everybody in the West Coast and, you know, good, uh, you know, afternoon um, to everybody on the East Coast. I um, hope everybody's, you know, having a wonderful day so far and is ready to kill the weekend. And um, I, I had, I wanted to do this call yesterday, but, um, you know, had a lot of things going on and whatnot. But, you know, this is kind of going to be a continuation from, you um, the call I did last time with the Platinum 2000s, but it's going to be a little bit, um, you know, more detailed in advance. So it's going to be kind of similar, but it's going to start to make, you know, a little bit more sense, right? So if you were on that call with the Platinum 2000s and that kind of, you know, maybe opened up your perspective or made it make more sense to you, um, you know, especially you guys being Platinum 5000s and up, um, Drop a seven in the chat. I want to see how many people got on that call and actually felt as though it, it provided some, some clarity, okay? So that's what this is all about. It's all about providing clarity and understanding so that people understand how they can get to the next level. Now, you know, like I said, this call is for you know, anybody P5 and up, right? But it's the reason that Platinum 5000s are on this call. So if you're a P5, drop a P5 in the chat. I see that we have... Um, you know, 77 people on the call, but I want to know exactly how many of you guys are actually within that range of platinum 5,000, okay? These are the, the the new chairman's loading, right? You guys are going to be the next six-figure earners within your particular groups, okay? You guys are going to be your, your, your next six-figure earners, okay? So we got quite a handful of y'all, okay? Perfect. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and get, get into it. Yo, can you take her to the room? Perfect. So let's go ahead and get into it, all right? So just to give you guys a little refresher of what, what we talked about on that Platinum 2000 call, um, we were talking about uh, quite a few different things. You know, we're talking about, you know, some different principles, diving deeper within your particular organizations and, you know, things of that, that nature, take her, that are, that are gonna actually, you know, help and whatnot, okay? So with that being said, we're gonna get a little bit deeper simply because at the end of the day, as a Platinum 5000, your responsibility is a lot bigger than a platinum 2000 per se, right? You're in a very special position because you're making 60 grand a year, which is, you know, more than the average college graduate salary. Um, and you're on the verge of becoming a six figure earner. Okay. So because you made and are making a lot more money than, you know, most people, the, you know, the conversation has to be had with you specifically because you've experienced something that they haven't experienced. You see, Platinum 2000s, yeah, they have organizations, but they haven't experienced what it's like to get 1250 on autopilot every week, right? So it's a completely different ballgame. So now that you're a Platinum 5000, you have to really start to structure and understand your org because a lot of times, when you get to this point at Platinum 5000, the, the higher you get and the more that you move within the organization, the more detached you get from the bottom, right? Or from the customers, from the P150s, from the P600s, right? The closer you get to the top, the more you get detached, okay? And that's something that you want to prevent because what's going on on those lower levels is ultimately obviously going to affect you, but it's going to affect the way the whole business flows, okay? So, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times as a Platinum 5000, right? You tend to forget those things, right? You, you tend to forget, you tend to think that your, your P2 to P5 jump was easier than it really was because now you're there. While you were going through it, it was difficult, but now that you're a Platinum 5000, right? It's kind of difficult for you to sympathize or empathize and understand what they're going through. You just think they need to get the work done. P1000 to get the work done, right? You, you start to, and, and 
this is just from my experiences. I remember when I was at Platinum 5000, I had less sympathy for people at the lower ranks because I'm like, yo, bro, like three people, are you serious? Six, you know, 12 people, are you serious? Right, I'm de dealing with 200 some individuals, but I had to, you know, get my mind right. Okay, cool. So now let's talk about structure, right? Simple, all right? I want you guys to write down this principle, right? I want you guys to write this down. The first thing that, I, that we want to talk about um, pertaining to this training is going to be this, right? <clears throat> Never assume that people will be self-sufficient. So never assume or never expect people to be self-sufficient, right? That's the number one thing that I want you guys to always keep in the back of your mind because the frustration in building the business comes when expectation doesn't meet reality. You are expecting people, right, to be self-sufficient and do what you do. Wake up, be self-motivated and, 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 and put in the work. But you also got to remember that a lot of these leaders, right, they're, they're new to this. They, ha they haven't grown into the, to, to this rank and this responsibility. So you never want to assume that people will be self-sufficient. Now, why is that important, right? That's going to be important because your definition of what a leader is, right, what you think a leader is may not be what your leaders are, okay? So there's a few different types of leaders and I'm going to talk about a few of them, right? There is, you know, the first type of leader, right? There's a leader that follows directions, right? Okay, uh, let me see. I'll say there's, th there's three types of leaders, right? There's somebody who's ranked, let's start there, ranked, right? Meaning they're getting paid, but they're really not doing anything, right? They're getting paid for free. They may have gotten placements, they may have enrolled their way to their rank, but they're not, they're getting paid for free. This is gonna be more than likely the majority of people in your org. The majority of quote unquote leaders, oh, pay Q just hit. There are people who are just ranked. So I'm gonna give you three leaders ranked, right? People who are just ranked, they're getting paid for free, right? Drop a one in the chat if you know somebody in your business that you feel as though they're probably getting paid for free. They may have enrolled some people, but they're definitely not tapping in with their team, right? They're definitely not tapping in with their team. They're definitely not doing the things that I'm doing, right? Remember, like I said last call, hindsight is 2020. You tell people to call people every day, but at that rank, you may or may not have been doing it, right? So you have people who are ranked, okay? You got to be able to distinguish between that, okay? Then the second type of leader that you're going to have, right, is going to be a leader who follows directions, this is going to be a follower, right? And followers are people that you tell them what to do and they put in work, right? They might call their team, okay? They'll, they might host trainings if you tell them to host, right? They, they recruit, they post on Instagram, they're active, right? These are people that are, for the most part, locked in. They listen to what you're saying. They want to get to the next level, okay? And... You know, they're doing everything. Think about it. they're posting on Instagram, they're they're getting on trainings, they're you know motivated, they're edifying, they're running three ways, they're doing it, they're basically doing everything that you would want a leader to do. Right? We all have those people that yo, that's a shooter, right? So, you know, besides follower, you can call them a shooter too. Right. That's your shooter. Oh, he just got an enrollment. That's somebody who's gonna be bringing people into your business and being able to sustain them. OK. As everybody follow me so far. And, you know, you can turn your camera on, thumbs up, whatever. Some in the chat, but I want to make sure that you guys get this. because, Like I said, this is a smaller call. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Makes sense. All right. bet. so now the next type of leader. Right. And this is the type of leader you are. Right. It's a leader who can create other leaders a duplicatable leader, right? A pinnacle leader, right? That's you. Somebody who, you know, like I said, the first one is ranked, somebody who's just getting paid for free. The second one is somebody who's putting in the work. And the third one is somebody who can actually duplicate themselves into other people. They can get other people to become followers, 
right? They can get other people to become shooters, shooters that can create shooters, right? Now, the main difference between a shooter and, and a pinnacle leader, a shooter and a leader that can create other leaders is simple, right? That shooter cannot create other leaders. Yes, they're hosting trainings. Yes, they're enrolling people, right? But the only thing that they've been able to create so far is people who are ranked. They can get people to hit a rank. Oh, I just popped the P6. I just popped the P1. I just popped the P150, right? But they can't get people to be self-sufficient, right? That's the main difference. They cannot get people to be self-sufficient, right? If they're not on them, if they're not on their body, if they're not calling them, they're not putting the pressure, those not keeping them motivated, they tend to take a step back. So anytime that shooter takes a step back from their business, it goes on the decline, even though they have leaders, those people that are ranked, right? Anytime the pressure's not on, they fall back. Anytime there's a pullback, guess what? Th those ranked people fall back. And all you're left with is the, the shooter who's self-sufficient, okay? So what you're trying to figure out is, okay, Ray, I, I, I'm trying to develop. It's all about leadership development here, okay? So you're trying to figure out how to duplicate your efforts, right? Because if you're just creating a bunch of, you know, if you are the only person that can create self-sufficient leaders in your business, right? getting that massive level of success is going to be a lot more difficult. Okay. It's going to be a lot more difficult. So with that being said, I'm going to give you guys a, a strategy that's kind of going to help you guys, you know, start to create more leaders like you, more people that can create other leaders that can create people that are self-sufficient, that can duplicate your efforts. I want you guys to write this down. My, I, I may have mentioned this on the last call, but I want to make sure that, um, you know, I repeat myself, right? Your leaders only do 10% of what you do, okay? Your leaders only do 10% of what you do. It, it, it's, it's very simple, pretty straightforward. Your leaders will literally only do 10% of what you do. So with that being said, well, so with that being said, right? It's very, very, very simple. I, I usually operate by a one out of 10 rule, right? That means one out of 10 of my leaders, right, is actually probably going to be self-sufficient, okay? One out of 10 of them. Now, if that's the case, that means in order for my efforts to be duplicated, I'm going to need about 10 people to do at least 10% of what I do, and then that should be 100%. If 10 people do 10% of what you do, your, your efforts have been doubled right? They're going to do just as much as you do. So if you go very, very, very hard every single day and you get 10 people to just do 10% of that, your efforts have been duplicated. So now it's like, how, how do I get to the next level? So let's talk about it. Um, very, very simple. Let's talk about it. My, my connection tripped off. So look, 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 look. So um, yeah, and in and, and in essence, yeah, somebody just mentioned it. You know, ten solid leaders in every leg would be would be decent. But um, just to kind of get to how do we create, you know, th those leaders and whatnot. So this is what it comes down to, right? When you're assessing your business, um, I want you to ask yourself this, right? I'm gonna ask you this. What do all of your leaders have in common? Especially for you, Platinum 5000. So for everybody, but what do all your leaders have in common? Let's see if somebody can get the answer right. What do all your leaders have in common? There you go. Somebody got it right. They depend on you. Absolutely. Well, all your leaders have in common, for the most part, is that they depend on you. They have the same mentor exactly, right? So what I'm, gonna, what I'm about to tell you is uh, I kind of came, I got the idea last night and I wanted to, you know, I was so eager to talk about this and I want you guys to write this down. I, I nicknamed this the, uh, the three-shot doctrine or the hot hand. 
right? I've been watching a lot of uh, playoff basketball, right? And like, that's what kind of inspired me to, to think of this. So it's like, what's happening in your business is this. Now that you're a P5 and you have leaders, you're trying to put the ball in the hands of somebody that you trust and you want them to deliver. You want them to score. You're trying to put parts of your organization, right? And make these individuals responsible for it, right? But the problem that's happening is you put the ball in their hands and they don't know what to do with it, right? How, some of you guys might feel like that where you have some leaders, well, when you take a step back, nothing's really getting done. Now, here's the thing, right? Well, with the three-shot doctrine, what I talk about is having a hot hand, right? If I'm on the court and you just saw me knock down three back-to-back -back shots, safe to say, when you come back down the court, are you going to pass it to me or not? Let me know below, right? You're probably going to keep feeding me because I just knocked down three of them in a row, right? Even though you know you can get it done, if you see me open, you're going to pass it to me, right? For those that don't watch basketball, it's, all, it's okay. If I did three, if I, you know what I'm saying? If I won my last three fights, you're more likely to bet on me to win than my opponent. If I got three home runs, my last three games, you're going to, more, you know what I'm saying? So it's just the high hand. If they have the high hand, you want to pass it to them, right? You can't get mad at those leaders because you're passing them the ball and they don't have the hot hand. That's what's happening, right? You're getting double teamed, right? You have a lot of work going on, right? You have a lot of things on your plate. You're a P5 now with a bigger org. You're a chairman with a big org. So you think, okay, cool. Let me just pass it on to them. But guess what? What you're, listen, never expect your leaders to do something that they haven't proven they can do. I'm gonna say that one more time. Never expect your leaders to do something that they've never proven they can do, right? If they haven't produced three self-sufficient leaders themselves, then don't expect them to just be able to produce what you've been able to produce. You see, you can get lucky and get that one shooter, right? That's your homeboy. Yo, you signed up somebody that's cool. So he's a P1 and he got a P1. He's a P2 and he got a P2, right? But when you get three of them, it's a lot less luck that plays into that, that plays a role in this, right? It takes intent being intentional and some skill. Okay. So that's ultimately what's going on. Never expect your leaders to do something that they haven't proven they can do, right? You're telling your leaders to create a leader and they never done it. I just told you, what's the, what's the common denominator between all of your leaders right now? It's you. Until they can do it by themselves at least three times, you can't take your foot off the gas and you can't expect them to do it. Let me know if this is making sense so far, right? I'm gonna try to clarify it as much as I can, but let me know if this is kind of making sense so far, okay? So I'm just to get back, you know, into it. They haven't done it yet, right? They don't have a person that's self-sufficient, right? They don't. And what happens is as a leader, because they're self-sufficient, you think, okay, cool, go create more self-sufficient leaders, people that are gonna work no matter what. And if they haven't done that yet, you can't take your foot off the gas, you see? You can't continue to gamble with your business, right? Because what's happening is you got leaders and then you have to notice, okay, cool. They have not been able to create anybody under them that's moving like them. Therefore, you need to keep doing it, right? That's the three shot doctrine, right? Hot hand, okay? You got to assess your leaders and be like, okay, cool. These people are self-sufficient but then they don't really got nobody else that's really, really running under them. So I need to step in because I'm the only one that can create leaders that are self-sufficient. I'm the only one that can provide that perspective and, and add that the type of value and, and work that they need, if, if that's making sense, right? So that's ultimately what you want to do. Um, and that's going to help you guys tremendously, right? The three shot, right? If that person hasn't been able to create three if he's a P1000 P2, he hasn't been able to create three P1000s 
without your help, then safe to say your assumptions are going to be the death of you. You thinking, okay, cool. Well, he's a P1. He can do it. Well, he got one P1. Why can't he do it again? Nah. If he does it three times, then yes, I'm going to continue to feed you. I'm going to, I can trust you then. Right? The first time it might be luck. The second time it might be chance. The third time is no, no coincidence. Okay? Perfect. Right? So, um, is it, real quick, does anybody, before I continue, move on, does anybody have any questions on that? Real quick. I'll take one or two. If we good, just drop a one, I'll move on. But if anybody, okay. Perfect. How can we get the shooter to produce leaders like them? All right, so that's going to lead on to my next point. Any other questions? I'm going to answer your questions. Though. I won't forget about it. One more question, because that that's actually part of the next, um, my next point. How can we get the shooter to produce leaders like them? Uh, okay, perfect. So I'm going to answer all of those questions. Give me one moment. I'm, about to, I'm trying to pull up this clip so you have to see it. All right, perfect. So those are all great questions. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and answer them while we can. So uh, Danny, your question is going to lead to my next statement. But uh, Chris Dent, uh, how do you get leaders out of a slump? Okay. So um, when you're working with certain individuals and they be, maybe you know, slacking or, you know, they may be in their feelings or may not be working how they used to work. Um, that is a very strong indicator. Most of the time that happens because they are by themselves. Um, and the, usually leaders in the beginning go into a slump when they feel as though they're doing it by themselves. They hit that brick wall, right? I hit P1, I hit P2, right? I have people in my business, but nobody seems to want it how I want it. Right. Nobody seems to have that same desire that I have. Right. They stop believing in people. And in sense, they stop, you know, they sometimes those leaders that understand, they believe in themselves. They just don't believe in their team. Right. They don't necessarily believe in their team. And when that happens, um, I think that, you know, that's why this call is so important. Right. I think when that happens, you have to go in there and create leaders for them to prove to them that. <laughs> Hold on. Prove to them, yo. Put the dog up, bro. Give me one second, family. Yo. All right, real, real quick. Sorry for that disturbance. So, like I was saying, family, um, I think it's super, super important that when leaders are in a slump like that, it's usually because they feel as though they are by themselves, right? They are simply by themselves, and when they're when they're by themselves. It's going to be very difficult for you to actually, you know, get them to do what it is that you want them to do. <laughs> They're by themselves, right? They, 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 they lose faith in people. They think, okay, cool, right? You know, everybody's not like me. People aren't going to run. People aren't going to, you know, do the things that I want them to do. So the best way to get somebody out of a slump, because your conversations can only do but so much, right? Your conversations can only do but so much. You're going to be talking to them and trying to convince them and trying to drag them along. Right. And you're going to find yourself wasting a lot of time trying to convince somebody to come along. Right. But I think the best way to get a leader out of a slump is to go in there and show them that it's not that these people don't want it. It's simply that you're not believing in them. Because guess what? If you if they have a shooter, if and, and that at least and, I, and I, I'm glad you asked that question, because that literally leads to my next point. Right. The next point in the conversation is you need to look at all of your leaders and ask yourself. Does he add, does he have his own shooter? Right? Does he that same experience you have with him? Does he have that with somebody else? Right? Does he have that with somebody else? So I want you guys to write this down. Right? You have to get your shooters a shooter. You have to get your shooters a shooter. Right? 
so that he doesn't feel as though he's by himself, so that she doesn't feel as though she's in this alone, right? Because I promise you, if you go in there and develop a leader under them yourself, take them under your wing and develop them yourself, that person is now going to start to see that, wow, right? There is hope. There are people that can be like me. There are people that are going to have wonders. They're not going to feel as though they're by themselves. Let me know if, the, if that part, if that answered your question and if that um, was helpful. You see, trainers like this are more so of a conversation, more than a, more so of a conversation than a trainer. I'm saying they feel as though they're by themselves. So think about it. If you go in there and get them a shooter, it's going to be a lot different. I said that leads to, my, to, to that point I wanted to make. Your job is to make sure that each and every single one of your self-sufficient leaders has a self-sufficient leader because you're the only person that can create one, right? So when you go do that for them, because here's the thing, right? When you tell your leaders, du just duplicate yourself, duplicate yourself, duplicate yourself, right? And they feel as though they're stuck. They're hearing you, but they, they may not say this, but in the back of their mind, they're thinking, wow, hmm. If you know so much about building leaders, why don't you just do it for me? They're not going to say it to your face. They might not even be conscious enough to think of this. But I'm telling you, if somebody's telling me, bro, shoot the ball, shoot the ball, get a bucket, get a bucket, and they're getting no buckets, I'm going to say, yo, bro, why don't you score? Right? Why don't you get the job done? Why don't you show me how easy it is? Okay? And that's ultimately what it comes down to. Right, you have to make sure that you go in there, take people, take some of their people under your wing, directly mentor them, and get them a shooter. So you don't you don't want listen, you don't want your self-sufficient leaders to feel as though they're by themselves. Literally. Right. You need to build a supporting cast around them so that they kind of, you know, start to understand, okay, cool, this makes sense. Because it's one thing to it's one thing to experience mentorship, but and but it's another thing to witness mentorship. You see, so because I've experienced it, doesn't mean I can do it with somebody else, right? They have to see you. They saw you develop them, but they have to see you in action developing somebody else, right? They experience it through the first person. Now to bring it all full circle, they also need to experience it in third person when they're watching, if that makes sense, right? If you get both perspectives hand in hand, then they'll understand how to build leaders, right? They witnessed it, they experienced it first person, the mentorship, and now they're gonna watch you do it to somebody else and get those same results because that's gonna connect all of the dots for them. And then it's gonna say, okay, cool. That's what I need to be doing. That's what I was doing wrong. You need to show them, if that makes sense. You're just connecting the dots for them, right? What I'm trying to do is I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want it to give them a one-sided response because that's only going to work for some people. That might have worked for you and it might have worked for some of your self-sufficient leaders. But if I can give everybody a well-rounded, holistic experience, right, everybody's going to be able to at least have the chance to get success. You cannot be one-sided, right? You have to question. One thing that I, that I do a lot is I question everything, right? Why, 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 until I can finally think of the answer. If I keep asking questions, eventually I'll ask the right question, okay? Eventually I'll ask the right question, man. So that's kind of what you want to do. You've experienced it, right? You've experienced it. Think about it. If I give you a haircut, does that mean you're going to be able to give somebody else a haircut just because I gave you a nice haircut? No. You've experienced me lining you up. Now you're going to watch me line somebody else up. Full circle. You know what it should feel like, and you also know what it should look like to do it. These leaders only know what it feels like, but they don't know how to do it. So they're going off the feeling, how they're feeling. Well, you need to run, you keep, ah, da, 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 da. but they haven't experienced what you've experienced, if that makes sense, right? So when you're assessing your business, before you get mad at a shooter, be like, okay, cool. Let me go get him one, right? 
Let me go get him one so he don't feel as though he, he's in the field by himself. Let me show him how easy it is. Talk is cheap. Yo, develop leaders, bro. Okay, matter of fact, take a step back, bro. Watch this. Let me show you, let me show you how easy it is. Right? Because here's the thing. Seeing is believing and hearing is faith. What you see, you will believe. And what you don't see and you only hear, you got to have faith. You believe in yourself because I gave you value. You applied it and you saw that it worked. Right? You know that this stuff works. Right? But now you're trying to get your, that leader's trying to get other people to just run based on faith. Right? But that's why they have, you got to see it. Right. You don't really, the, your, your leader doesn't really believe in the people in his business until they see that one of them can be successful. Right. That's the thing. I think I'm getting somewhere here. Right. So you got your self-sufficient leaders and you're telling them to go build other leaders. Right. And you're wondering why they're not being able to do this because they don't believe in them, but they don't believe in them because they haven't seen any of them run. So if you go in there and get one of them to run, and they see that, now they now, now all of a sudden they start to believe in their team. I, I don't know if this is making sense, but that's kind of what, what I'm trying to say. Like, they believe in themselves, but in order for them to believe in your team, you have to make them a believer. And you make them a believer by you going in there and you creating a leader. Because they're looking at their team like, oh, these people don't want it like me. But if one starts to want it, if just one of them starts to want it, they start to look at their entire team a lot differently. They're like, wow, there is hope. There is hope. But when you keep expecting people to say, build leaders, build leaders, build leaders, and they don't got no hope in them, they don't got no belief in them, you want them to go out based on faith, right? Belief is, you know, faith is powerful, right? But belief is a lot more powerful, in my opinion. If I have the ability to get somebody to see something, I have to get them to see it. Because then only some of your leaders are going to go the extra mile. Because it takes a special individual to have faith in people that they have no reason to have faith. You can't see it. So think about it. You want somebody that to just, they have no physical evidence to believe that these people can run, but you expect them to call their whole team and pour into them, be, be, be logical here. You're expecting somebody that's never seen these people show any ounce of being able to run, being able to run, right? Being able to run just based on faith. You're gonna get one out of 10 like that. Maybe one out of a hundred people are gonna be like, you know what? Even though these people, have, I haven't seen them run, I haven't been, they haven't proven it to me, I'm still gonna pour into them. Maybe that was you. You might have been like that. You might have had that desire enough where you had that faith where, you know, I haven't gotten any runners yet, but I believe in them anyways. But, but you can't expect people to, to move like that. That's the 1%. 1% of the people are going to pour into people even though they have no physical evidence. Your job is to give them physical evidence that, that, that those people can work. Oh, you think, you think your team doesn't have runners? You think you need more people on your team? You think you, you need another shooter to come in? Watch this. I'm calling your downline. I'm calling your back office. I, I find someone that wants it. I take him under my wing, and I give him the real game, and I make him a leader, and now, boom. You know, such and such hit P6. They're going to hit you up like, yo, such and such hit P6. Such, bro, he's running. Yeah, I know. And then the belief is going to start to flow in. Right. So as you're assessing your business um, for everybody, you know, platinum five thousands, whatever, you know, you got to look at him and say, OK, cool. Have I done enough? Have I given him a good example? Have I shown him or have I just told him what to do? When you listen, when you tell somebody what to do. Right. You're letting them interpret it for what they think. But when I show them what to do, I minimize the room for interpretation. Right. I don't want you to build the leaders how you think it might work. I'm going to show you exactly what it should look like. Right. 
Drop a one. Have you guys ever seen Forrest Gump? Now, if you ever, if you guys ever seen the movie Forrest Gump, drop, drop a one in the chat for me, right? Real, real quick. I want to see something. Right. So the movie Forrest Gump is one, you know, one of my favorite movies of all time outside of, you know, The Wolf of Wall Street. Right. And I kind of want to, um, you know, talk about a particular scene in the movie. Right. So hopefully if you haven't watched the, the movie, I want you guys to go watch it. But if you guys remember the movie in, the, in, in, in Forrest Gump and I mean the part in Forrest Gump where he was running. Right. He was just sitting down one day. He laced up his, his shoes, his kicks. He got up and he started running, right? In the beginning, how many people were following him? Drop down the answer below. In the beginning, how many people were following for his gun? Right, zero. Everybody looked at him like he was crazy. He ran through crowds, he ran through people, he ran through towns. Everybody was looking at him like he was crazy. But because he was so crazy to keep running, people thought they were, exactly, thought he was psychotic. Somebody started running with him. Now it's him and this other guy and they're running and they're running and they're running and they're running and people are watching and watching and watching and watching. And eventually, as he just kept, he never stopped running and never kept worrying about them, more and more and more and more people started following and following and following and following until it became a worldwide phenomenon. That's gonna be the same thing that happens in your business. You see, some people are gonna see it once and they're going to understand it, and they're going to follow you, and they're going to start to lead. Other people have to see it over and over again. They're not going to get it all at the same time. So when you're trying to build, here's the thing. Leadership development, building leaders comes from being the leader. You see, you lead from the front, not from the back. Right? You're never going to be able to create a leader by telling him to do something. Right. That's going to be one out of 10, one out of 100 people are going to hear it and be able to do it. Right. Hear it and be able to do it. When I was uh, on, on the step team for, for Morehouse, right, for, for, for Cap Alpha Psi, right. I was an individual where I could see a step once I could see a stroll one time and I could do it right away. But there were other individuals that needed to see it over and over and over and over again in order for them to, to, to finally get it down packed. Right? In order to finally get it down packed, if that makes sense, right? So what you have to do is simple. I go and I work my leaders, I create a leader, right? I gave him a shooter. If he still can't create more shooters, I keep going and I keep going and I keep going. And remember, it's a numbers game. Some people are going to see it once and do it. Other people are they're going to see you create leader after leader after leader, level up, and then they're going to start to do it, right? If that makes sense. So, so far, um, has this provided any clarity so far? I'm, I'm going to wrap it up soon just because I know y'all got, you know, stuff to do, you know, good launch and whatnot. Um, and I'm also recording this call. I'm throw it on YouTube so you guys can go rewatch it, record, pause, take notes, all of that good stuff, man. Um, perfect. So somebody messaged me, said, at what point do you stop pouring into a leader when they're not showing any change? Um, so I'll, I'll give you guys, I, I kind of talked about this before and I'll go back into it. So, um, what you can do is this, right? And that, that is a great question. So the first thing that I usually do is, um, I try to provide understanding and some of you guys have heard this before, but I try to provide understanding. Maybe it is that they don't get it. And sometimes they don't want to admit to you that they're stuck that they don't understand. So I call them, try to provide clarity. If it's not that, then it's time to have an uncomfortable conversation. There's something else going on. We need to address the elephant in the room, right? When you're having an uncomfortable conversation, the conversation is more so showing them that what they say they want doesn't align with what they're doing. It's not about what I want. I want you to hit chairman, but you got, my got other things going on. So you have to address it, right? I've had conversations with people about their professionalism, the friends that they hang out with, relationships, whatever the case may be. They may not like the conversation. The third thing that you can uh, do is get them on the phone with a mentor. Get them on the phone with somebody that they look up to, right? 
get them on the phone with somebody that, that, that they look up to. Um, because sometimes they may feel as though, you know, you're bullying them or ah, da, 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 but if they hear it from somebody else that they look up to the exact same thing, they may wake up. Right. And then if that doesn't work, then you need to move around. Right. Remember, like I said on the last call, do not prioritize the individual over the organization. Remember, Platinum 1000 is not that one person that's getting paid 250 every Friday. It's 30 individuals. So when you remember that, you kind of detach yourself from that and say, keep it pushing. And then just uh, to go over my first point, understanding. Understanding is the what, the why, and the how. What they need to do, why they're doing it, and how exactly it is that they're doing it. If you can get those three dimensions down pat, um, they'll kind of understand a little bit more. But let me tell you guys something, right? It doesn't take you, let me tell you, it doesn't take you weeks to figure out if somebody's not getting it. If I talk to you and after two days, nothing changes, then what makes you think a week later something's going to change? Right? Remember, believe in people, but don't believe them. Seeing is believing. If I gave you the game, 48 hours have passed and nothing, nothing has changed, then I'm moving on, right? You have to milk the GV, right? You got to milk the GV. It's not personal, right? Everybody's going to get theirs, but everybody's not going to get it at the same time because everybody, you know, has to experience different things. Sometimes they may have to see you level up or see somebody pass them up or whatever the case may be for them to finally wake up, right? But when, when you move on from somebody, you don't cut them off on some, like if somebody hits you up and say, yo, bro, how come you haven't hit me up in a while? And don't just be like, yeah, bro, you're not working, so I'm not fucking with you no more, right? Because then they're going to take it personal. They're never going to spend the block, right? You want them to still win. You're going to win, but just maybe not right now. You're going to get to the next level, but just maybe not right now. Maybe you, there's still more experiences that need to happen. But you don't have to be, you know, a, a mean individual to say, you know what, I don't rock with you no more. I still rock with you, right? But I'm doing what's best right now, right? I am doing what, what, what's best right now. Um, do you advise going deep in your back office and calling your whole downline to create new leaders or ask your shooters who you think are potential leaders? Michael, that is a great question, right? I'm glad that you asked that. Um, so Michael says, do you advise going deep in your back office and calling your whole downline to create new leaders or ask your shooters who they think are potential leaders? Now, that's a great question because oftentimes, right, your leaders may be able to identify potential but not tap into it. So that's honestly a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. I definitely advise you do that, right? Um, you know, definitely ask your leaders who they think has potential or is, is next up because they can identify it sometimes but they definitely can't activate it. and i think that's where, where you come in so that that'll probably you know shorten the time um so that's a that's a that's a great uh you know what i'm saying collaboration man i can learn a lot from you so yeah that's what you want to do for self for self like ask you who you think's next up who you think's hot boom you start coming in um what um what way is best to show leaders how you're about to build another leader. Um, I think a great way to do it is, um, you know, I like to run three ways. Um, I, that's what I do a lot of, I, I like to run three ways. So I'll make sure that when I'm on the phone with this individual that you're either listening to it or, you know, see me do it. Um, or a lot of times, you know, I'll tell somebody to do something and just go do it myself and they'll see that it works. Um, but I, I think that's the, 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 the best way for, that for them to see it is really get them involved. Don't just go out and do it. Look, if you have a leader that's in a slump and doesn't want to do anything, then you just got to do it by yourself. But you have a leader that's active and wants to run, but they just can't get it. That's when you need to start getting deep in the trenches with them, right? Having those uncomfortable conversations with that customer or whatever, with that leader on the phone and actually getting them involved. Don't get mad at, listen, if you have a leader that's not doing anything, then fine, you got to do it by yourself. But if that leader wants to, but just can't, keep them involved in the process. Include them in it, right? Include them in it. You're going to do a call with that individual, 
Make sure that that leader's on that call, right? You're going to do it three-way. Make sure that that leader's on that three -way, right? Keep them in the loop. And um, another thing that's just a sidebar, anytime that you create another leader for your leaders, always edify that leader. Because if not, sometimes they're going to, you know, you can de-edify somebody by just because you didn't edify them. Just by default. Just because you didn't bring them up, you de-edify them. So make sure that you always, you know, bring that back and, 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 and whatnot. Um, and uh, somebody said, what are the, some qualifications of self-sufficient leaders? So if I was to, to, to kind of come up with a list of self-sufficient leaders, um, it, it's very simple, right? A self-sufficient leader is somebody who takes initiative, meaning they, they do things without being told, right? You don't have to tell them to call their team because they can show you a call log. You don't have to tell them to post on Instagram because they've already done it, right? That's what I mean by self-sufficient. It's just somebody who takes initiative to build their business by themselves, right? You don't have to send them a training directly because they're getting on that training. You don't have to set, tell them to drop the schedule because they already sent the schedule to the team. Does that answer your question? Right, so self-sufficient is simple, right? Somebody that does things without being told. The same way you guys, right? You guys already post are up and have posted on Instagram. I'm pretty sure your mentor didn't tell you today, yo, Jess, yo, right? Go post on Instagram. Dom, go post on Instagram. They didn't tell you. You just did it by yourself. So when you think about self-sufficient, that, that's ultimately what it comes down to um, somebody that's doing things by themselves, okay? So um, that's kind of what we want to do. I want you to start to assess your leaders, okay, and start to develop leaders for them. Literally, start to develop leaders for them so that before you get mad at them, you can say, okay, cool, well, he's by himself. Hmm. How would you, at the end of the day, how would you feel if you were a, a, a P5 with 200 people and nobody doing anything but you? How would you feel? Think about that. How would you feel as a P2? You'd feel drained, absolutely. Right? So put yourself in, before you say, yo, go create a leader, put yourself in their shoes. He's probably a P1 right now, totally by himself. And I'm saying P1000 because usually at P2, you might have at least one or two people with you, maybe. But P1, you're usually totally by yourself. Right? And by you doing this, by you leading by example, creating leaders, you're teaching them to believe in their business and also to take a chance on people because they know, okay, cool. He's a platinum 5,000 and oh, here he is talking to a P6. Here he is talking to a P150. Here he's talking to a customer. If he's P1000 talking to P150s, talking to P600s and talking to customers, who am I not to tap in with my downline, right? But if you play the bougie role, they'll play the bougie role and nothing's gonna get done. Okay, nothing's gonna get done, right? Nothing is gonna get done. So that, that's ultimately, that's what I kind of what the conversation was about is the three shot doctrine, right? If they haven't provide, you know, made three self-sufficient leaders by themselves, don't pass them the ball, just keep scoring until they decide, okay, cool, I'm gonna do what he does. Eventually, guess what? They're gonna get tired of scoring and they're gonna copy your moves. They're gonna copy your moves because they see it over and over and over again. Some people are gonna see you get a layup one time and say, okay, cool, pass it to me, I got it. Other people need to see it over and over and over again. But the, the key is to continue to lead by example, no matter what. You lead from the front and that's when, you know, all good things are gonna start to happen. And this, um, what, that's a great question. What if you edify them, but it catches up with them? Do you care to elaborate? I would love to ask you a question, but do you care to you know, elaborate a little bit? I think you have a good question though. Oh, uh, perfect. What if, you, <laughs> you funny. So what if you edify them, but it catches up with them, their work doesn't match. Um, so number one, um, you edify them or whatever, and let's say their work doesn't match. It's cool because at the end of the day, 
the, you, you, that person saw you still speak highly about somebody, okay? You never want to retract it and speak bad about people. Usually what I do is I say, you know what, you know, maybe he's going through some personal things and whatnot, you know, I don't want you to judge him because he's human, right? And we all go through, through things, um, but I'm here for you. So that, that would be more so my approach. What you don't want to do is say, you know what, he's not running, bro. Forget him. You just get his rock with me because they're going to do that later on. And sometimes it's going to bite you in the butt because what if his work doesn't match now, but then later on, he's really running, really trying to get to it. And now because you de-edified him, his leaders don't respect him. Because just because he's not running right now doesn't mean he doesn't have potential to go chairman. Right? Great question. What if their upline leaves come back and their respect is lost? Um, I'm a firm believer that once respect is lost, there's nothing you can do about it. That's just how I, I move. Right? Once somebody loses your that individual's respect, it, it's very little you can do to just get that person to, to, to just listen again. At that point, um, usually what I do is I, I have a conversation with um you know the individual that came back just to get them to understand what's going on right and i usually just fill in the gap that i mean everybody's approach to it is different but i find it very you know what i'm saying it, it is what it is so somebody loses respect so i would just tell that individual look look don't get mad at this person for not wanting to work with you you might have to prove yourself out of that right and even then they still might not rock with you and i'll probably just start working with that individual myself because you know, I got to make that adjustment. Um, what was your day-to-day -day at P5, bro? Can you go into detail? Okay, perfect. So my day-to-day -day at P5,000. So I'll give you guys my personal experience at P5,000. So when I was Platinum 5,000, um, I had a leg that was maxed out for chairman. And what is it? 90, 90, 45. So I have a leg that was maxed out for chairman. Um, and yeah, a leg that was maxed out for chairman. 9045. So what I was doing at Platinum um, 5000 every day was, of course, I'm building my business, and, uh, but I was focusing on recruiting within my business, right? Recruiting within my business. So this is kind of, kind of help you, especially if you've ever had a weak leg or felt weak. I don't even like that word. You got to recruit within your business, right? You see people join the business, not because they believe but because they felt some certain type of way. They felt some certain type of way, right? They made a emotional decision they wanted to make change because think about it, somebody believed then when they joined, they would put in the work. So now you have a group of people in your business that are in the business, but don't believe yet. So you have to close them again. You have to start to recruit within your business. So a lot of things that I was doing um, when I was a Platinum 5000 was, uh, and I, I didn't even think to ask my leader, and this, that's why hindsight is twenty twenty. What I should have been doing is asking my leaders, who you think's lit? And tapping in with them. But I was just going in there and just calling people, right? And it would affect my mood sometimes. But I, would, I, would, I think that would be the best thing you can do is just, you know, remember, everybody's not going to be a runner. It's a numbers game. The more people you call, the more likely you are to get to somebody. But I will just, you know, take a chance on different individuals and, um, I was doing a lot of just groundwork, calling people in my back office and seeing what I had going on, building relationships with individuals, right? Taking chances. I would have P600s that would enroll people and I would be calling their downline myself just because I, ne I didn't necessarily trust them. I was doing it by accident, but you know, now I'm able to teach it and, and through my experiences and get you guys to kind of do it on purpose. But the best thing you can do is recruit within your business, right? At the end of the day, you know the game best than anybody in your business. So think about it. If somebody talks to you every day, you, don't, you can't get them to go P150, right? Don't just say, oh, but what if they don't answer? But I pick somebody and call, like right now, I just posted a girl that, right now, I did it just to show. I, I, it was a girl in my business, right? I reached out to her. We got on the phone, right? Sometimes we get on the phone and it doesn't work. She went P150. Now I'm talking to her every day. I'm texting her every day. I'm calling her every day. I'm making an effort every day. Now, mind you, there's been times before where a few days go by and then this person doesn't want to talk no more. 
or just not as responsive. But if you keep doing it, you're going to find somebody that's super. The moment that you find somebody that's just interested in what you got to say, you keep them in your back pocket. You got to keep talking to them. You got to, the best thing, if I'm a platinum 5,000 right now, you need to go find three best, new best friends in your business. If all they do is talk to you and, 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 and listen to you and be around you or whatever, they're going to start to move like you. They're going to start to talk like you. They're going to start to think like you. You need to start to become a bigger influence in their lives. If that makes sense. Right? Somebody said, I was told I'm too nice and it's too family vibes. How do I be more assertive and run things as a business if it's already a family? I love that question, right? So drop a one if anybody else has experienced that. I was told I'm too nice and it's too family vibes. How do I be more assertive and run things as a business if it's already a family? But I love this question. So um, the best way I can answer this is this, right? So, um, you know, I, I think the family vibes are good and, how, you know, it makes people feel good and all that good stuff. But I think a lot of times what happens is, and this is what, what most people, um, is that they ignore the truth, okay? Um, they, they kind of ignore the truth, right? They ignore the truth. So what I mean by that is this. Um, you probably had uncomfortable conversations with them, correct? The, the person who answered the question, can you let me know, have you had an uncomfortable conversation with them? Because if you had, I got the answer. Because sometimes you can tell them, yo, bro, this, then the third, and they don't get it, right? So I think the, the, the best way, it, it, this is what I like to do, right? Um, I like to get other people to tell on themselves. I want them to snitch on themselves. Right. Because sometimes it's not good enough to hear from me. You needed to hear from yourself. Right. You know how you got to have that uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversations are cool, but you got to have that uncomfortable conversation with yourself. Here's the thing. Don't expect them to ever have. They'll get off the phone with you and not have that convo with themselves. Man, such and such. No, don't know what she's talking about. But what I like to do is I like to ask questions to get that person to hear what they're saying. Right. To hear what they're saying. For example, if I'm talking to a customer, this is a rough example. If I'm talking to a customer um, and I'm trying to get them to build or whatever the case may, may, case may be, they may have made money. I want them, I want to get them to build, but I want to make my money. I got this going on, right? I'm not going to sit there and try to just convince you um, that this works because what, what ultimately starts to happen is this, right? I kind of talked about this at the training yesterday, right? You got to get them to answer themselves. So I like to figure out what somebody wants, right? What do you desire for yourself? And then I start to question everything that you got going on so that you answer. So for example, like, you know, just telling somebody you could get rich is not good enough because what happens is this is where they're at. This is where they want to go. And they have an, they, they have an idea of where, how they're going to get there. Now, the thing is, if you can, here's the thing, you need to diagnose a problem and then provide a solution. But if you're just giving everybody the same damn solution, right, you're going to have people that are going to be hard to talk to. It's going to be hard to, you know, and, and, and to, to answer your question, like, you got to be, you know, more uh, assertive. The assertive comes from you, you don't got to be mean. I don't raise my voice at people, but I, but I, I, I get them to be put in perspective. So I'll give you guys an example. Right, if I'm talking to an individual, yo, what do you want to, well, in the next five years, I want to be successful, this and the third, how are you going to get there? Well, I'm going to do this and the third, but then I'm going to start rapping. I'm going to do this and the third, then I'm going to get in real estate. Okay, bet. Um, do you have a job right now? Yeah, I do. How old are you? I'm 23. Um, did you go to college? Nah, I didn't. Okay, cool. So you're 23, no college degree, and where are you working at? Yeah, I'm working at Walgreens for, for the meantime. How long have you been working? I've been working there for like a year and a half. Um, you know, how much money do they pay you now? Uh, like fifteen dollars an hour, bet, 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 bet. So, how much do you have any money saved up right now? Uh, that's kind of personal. Not listen. This is no judgment zone. I want you to know honestly. When other people ask you that, they're probably trying to make fun of you. Listen, I'm not trying to judge. I'm trying to help. Yeah, I got like a thousand dollars saved up. Okay, cool. So, what are your bills like? Like after 
you know, you know, your bills is paid and whatnot. How much money are you left with? Um, you know, I'm left with about three hundred dollars. So, so, how many hours do you work? Uh, like forty to fifty a week. Okay, cool. So you're working forty hours a week. You don't have a college degree. You make fifteen dollars an hour. You only have a thousand dollars saved up. You were working here for a year and a half. Um, think about it, right? At this pace, what's going to change? If this keeps going on, is that is that dream actually going to happen to reality, bro? Better think. When you get home, you're tired because you're working these 40 hours and nothing else is changing. Right? You see how that's not necessarily a mean conversation, but I got them to say it because I'm asking questions. You see, a lot of times you want to tell people about their life, but I like to talk to people about it. I like to ask some questions. Right? I like to ask some questions. So I want you to don't tell them about themselves, ask them about themselves and let them say it because then they'll hear it. They're like, damn, I really am 23 years old. I didn't go to college. I've been working here at Walgreens for mad long. I only make $15 an hour. I only have $300 extra money at the end of every month. It doesn't seem like me getting to that destination is possible, right? So once you showed them that, the gap between where they are right now and where they want to go, that, that bridge doesn't exist, then you can in, insert yourself. Then you can provide the solution because no, now they're backed into a corner and they feel as though, damn, I have to listen now. They don't like getting told what to do, right? Um, it's the same way around if the leader is mean to the point where the leader, where the mentees are scared to talk to their mentor. Absolutely, right? You cannot be an, you know, an asshole, man. You cannot be mean. You can't listen. They are not your kids or not your workers. I don't care if you know them or not. I don't care what relationship you got. Yelling at people is going to, you know, scare them away, right? Be that person that people are comfortable with and trust so that when you have the conversation, it hits in their heart. But you got to be comfortable, but you also can't shy away from the truth. And then somebody asked even a, a, a great question as well. They said, you know, Ray. Sorry, I'm having trouble. Have you with ever connection. had somebody Please run away from that situation moment. or that conversation? Yes. Right. I've had people do that. And here's the thing. When people don't want to talk about it, it makes you uncomfortable. But if you if, if, if you fold, then it's going to fall. I address the elephant in the room. Right. It's always about address, addressing elephant in the room. So if I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone with an individual, right? I, I, I you gotta, don't beat around the bush, man. Just address things head on. Let's talk about it, bro. What do you have going on in your life outside of this business that's stopping you, right? Because you got a lot of potential, bro, but I, I, I know it has to be something else. It can't be that you don't get it. It can't be that you don't work hard enough, bro. You see how I'm stroking your ego? It's not that you don't work hard enough, bro. I know you work hard, bro. But I know you're more than capable, right? You're one of the best leaders in this business, right? But something else has to be going on, bro. And you just kind of get them to open up. I like, you know, stroke their ego a little bit. That oftentimes uh, work. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer these last two questions and then I'm gonna um, kind of wrap up the training. But um, somebody said, uh, so recently the past events we traveled to has been drama in my org after the BNBs or during. How do I come back from people viewing things as messy now? Okay, cool. So uh, this is that happens because you're dealing with people, especially young people. I think the best thing to do is this. So like. Um, I know when I was coming up, I would always stay at the Airbnbs and I would have certain rules. I wouldn't let people smoke weed. I wouldn't let people drink. Um, there's a lot of little things that I would do just to kind of keep it, you know, of course, family vibe, but more professional so that they understand what's going on um, and whatnot. And yeah, so you being there is a big thing. Um, but like with drama, like, you know, those things tend to happen. Usually, I like to keep it, um, you know, you just got to be there. I think that that works often. Like, if you, if you partake in the BS, things like that are going to happen, right? 
Um, sometimes it should be that that type of environment. Um, Ray, I know you. Uh, what about women professional conversation? Okay, uh, can you can you elaborate on that before I answer this last question? What because I, I want to talk about that. What about women? How about women professional conversation? Um, so boom, Ray, I know you spoke about your day to day and what you've been deciding the factor that P five and on who we're gonna call. But what was your deciding factor at P5 on who you were going to call the next day? Sometimes I feel like I talk to the same people every day because those are the ones who really want it. But I have a potential leg that's lacking because it seems like no one wants it over there. So it's been harder to build that leg. Okay, perfect. So with that potential leg, um, you know, what happens is when you have that potential, and I love that. Whoever came up with that term, I love that. Potential leg over weak leg every day of the week, man. So with, with a potential leg, what happens is, you're going to start to, you know, expect them or want them to do what your other legs are doing, but it's something that you might not be doing with them, right? So remember, there is cause and effect, right? Certain things you do are going to lead to certain outcomes. So don't just look at those good legs that you're talking to, because a lot of people do that, right? They feel as though that potential leg doesn't have, they're, they're not moving. So I got to work with the people that are moving and then they end up not leveling up because that potential leg never changed. You got to look at, I'll give you guys an example, right? I had a leg that, you know, when I first was P5, that was, you know, maxed out for chairman. And I used to get mad at my other two legs because they wouldn't do that. And I'm like, damn, like, why can't y'all be like him? Right. But instead of me wanting them to be like him, I had to realize, okay, cool. What was I doing with that individual? Right. I was calling that individual every every single day, at least three times a day, having conversations with them, pouring into them, treating him like my best friend, right? But then with those other people, I wasn't doing that. So remember, you know, you played a role in the success of those other people. So it's like, there's something that you did with them that you're now not willing to do it because you did it once before, right? So with that potential leg, promise you, if you really sit there, you'll find them, right? You will find them, right? You will find them. Um, how about women professional conversations, profession, presenting themselves professionally? Um, you know, I think if you're a girl, if you're a woman, it's a lot easier to have that conversation with another girl. Um, but, you know, as a guy, I've had conversations with women and what I've told them is, um, you know, what, I mean, the, usually what I tell girls is like, you know, there's a concept called, uh, you could look it up. It's called, um, what's it called? I think it's called intersectionalism, right? It, intersectionality. And basically um, what the theory describes is when different prejudices intersect, right? So for example, if I'm a black man, right? I'm a Hispanic man. I'm Afro-Latino, whatever. I'm already prejudged. I have something, I have a prejudice going against me in my business simply because whether the color of my skin, my hair, whatever, how I look, right? So I got that going against me. Now, if you're a woman, you'll have that on top of being a woman. So you have those two things that intersect. So it's like, you know, if we have to work harder, they have to work even twice as hard. So, you know, that's kind of the perspective I give them, but it's like, you know, as long as they're running the bit, like you can't control them. As long as they're running the business, it's nothing wrong with. You know what I'm saying, be, you know, I, I get what you're saying, but it's like it's nothing wrong with it. Like, there's a complete difference between somebody being at a beach and posting a bikini picture than somebody, you know, making a twerk video. I'm saying they can, you can be sexy, you can be attractive. You know what I'm saying, but you have to know how to convey that without being offensive. You know what I'm saying, um. But like, don't, they definitely don't want to be controlled like that. You feel what I'm saying? Especially if they get the job done. Um, but like different things, like being on calls and stuff, you got to, you know, be more professional with stuff like that. Like same way, you know, I wouldn't want a guy getting on the call with a white beater. I don't want a girl getting on the call, you know, the cleavage out and whatnot. Um, and whatnot. And uh, the one thing also that I'm about to, um, I'm about to, okay, cool. Let me see the quick last question. But yeah, I think that's what it is, bro. Just to answer your question about um, who to call the next day, like, listen, like, is a lot of the conversations are getting, gonna be in vain with that potential leg, right? But if you have it 
worked with everybody on an individual basis, it's not going to work. What do you do with leaders who don't want to listen and try to do it their own way? So when people don't want to listen and try to try to do things their own way, right, that's even more reasons why you need to get in there. The reason that you need to get in there is because this, if you're only working with that leader, they're going to have primary influence over that org. So if I only work with that P1 or that P2, only with them, the moment they start doing things by themselves, they just isolated that whole part of their business. But if you've been helping them build leaders and been in there, right, you're still going to have primary influence. So even if that person is not listening, there's people that are going to want to work with you because you are a higher level. Right. How much were you working with your chairman leg at P5 versus the other two legs? Um, so when I was P5, like you got to do, you got to get to the next level, man. You feel me? Like when you have leaders that are self-sufficient, I was, you know, I was more so in communication with them. Um, and then with the other two legs, I spent most of my time there. How do you decide on what to work on for the day? Because I feel like there's so much to do and I don't know where to start. That's a, honestly, a, I love these questions. How do you decide on what to work on for the day? Because I feel like there's so much to do and I don't know where to start. Okay, cool. So um, I think where, where I decide is, um, you know, it's all about getting the momentum to move. You feel what I'm saying? So. A lot of times you just got to start to write things down and just start to execute. Okay. So what I used to do, I was just map it out and execute because if you map it out, right, it's going to seem like a lot more manageable than if you just wake up and say, oh, I don't, I don't even know where to start, but just start to take more action is going to be the best thing that you can possibly do. So what I, what I used to like to do was um, really go in my back office, right. And, pick new people to call and just, I, I would take a lot of chances throughout the day you feel me so one thing that i if you want to make it easier for yourself listen if you got a leg of 40 people bro write all 40 people out and call them all all by yourself within the next three four days you know what i'm saying then from there you start to you know figure out who wants it who, who, who am, who's going to stick around and who am i going to be calling every day right then you start to implement three ways now that these people are, are, are starting to run okay let me walk you through how to get the success instead of expecting you to just run because I talked to you. Okay, cool, you wanna run? Three ways. Perfect. Right? Perfect. But yeah, it's all good, man. No, no need to stress. But um, like I said, ultimately that's, that's kind of what you wanna focus on, man. Um, Somebody, this is a great question, and I, I'm gonna I'm wrap this up. Kind of, you guys, you guys got stuff to do. Is your daily activities different on the weekends than weekdays? For those of my team go and my on the weekends, that is a great, great question. Listen, on the week weekends for me, right? I spend the weekend really calling a lot of people that I haven't talked to before because. During the week, you can expect the basic trainings to be packed out. You can expect that type of stuff. But during the weekend where not a lot of things are going on in trading, people are going to start to take days off. So weekends, I focus on either getting new people in the business. That's why it's always good to host webinars or host the webinars. But you need to start to, those are good days to prep people for this following week. Right? So if you got customers or leaders or whatever, I spend a lot of time on the phone during the weekend to keep them engaged. Like this training, I, was, I wasn't going to do a training today. I'm here for Father's Day, but I said, you know what? Let me just keep the people engaged, man. So that's kind of, you always want to keep people engaged, um, you know, because on the weekends, there tend to be less trainings. That means you put in more phone work, right? It, it, there's no, oh, well, he's on the basics, so I shouldn't call him. You call a lot of these people and prep. Like I said, to me, weekends are prepping for the week. Okay? Weekends are, 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 are prepping for the week and whatnot. Um, but like I was saying, man, you know, it's super simple, right? You just got to get in the field, man. The biggest thing is that. I, I love talking to Platinum 5000 because that's a special rank, man. You're literally on the verge of becoming a six-figure earner, but you got to get in there, man. Right. 
Stop thinking that the money that you make is enough to get people to listen to you. For me. Uh, oh, this is the last thing I wanted to talk about before I forget. Okay. And this is gonna this is gonna end it off. Everybody on here is trying to go chairman 100 and up, I assume. Trying to get massive success. You need two things. Value and influence are going to get you the success that you want. Value and influence. You see, before you ask yourself, can you impact 500 people? You got to ask yourself, can you get 500 people to want to be like you? This is network marketing. Can you get 500 people to want to be like you? You see, if you toast trainings and call people and put in the work, that's only going to get you but so far. Right? When you think of people like Guy, you think of people like, you know, Chris, you think of people like Kari Bush, you think of people like Chris Dent, you think of people like Jalen Goss, Ariel Martin, Kimberly Mendoza, right? I could go on and on and on. Okay. When you think of people like that, you think they got to where they got to so that they put in work? Because sometimes you guys feel as though you're doing everything you can to still not work. You got to ask yourself, do people want to be like you? Right? That's it. It's influence. When people talk to you, do they want to be like you? You got to get people to want to live like you, to want to be like you, to want to move like you. Right? And that, that's going to be the biggest differentiating factor. Why do some people hit term 50 faster than others? Because people want to be like them. That means you guys have to be unapologetically confident. Right? People want to be like you because you get in the field, you put in work with them, and now you inspire them. You see, enough people don't want to be like you because you're not creating enough success stories yourself. See, because when you create a success story yourself, that person's forever going to edify you. But if you created your little five, six, 10 success stories and your org is getting bigger and bigger, the edification, you know what happens? The edification gets more and more watered down as the stuff goes, goes along. But if you have a bigger group of people that love and believe in you, they're going to make sure everybody loves and believes in you. You got to get people to want to be like you, man. So it's about creating individual success stories. How many people in your business can say, damn, as a P5, how many people in your business can say, I'm here because of him? Because if enough people start saying that, everybody's going to start to feel like, in some way, shape, or form, I'm here because of that individual. I owe it all to him. And then, of course, you don't take the credit. You give the credit to God. I don't know if that's, if, if that's making sense though, right? But when you think about, you know, I was just at an event with Jalen, I'll use him for example, right? He created, if he would have just created, listen, the chairman in his business, right? Are not the only people who he's had a hand on their success. If, there, if that was just that, he wouldn't have been at the level that he's at. But because he's created so many success stories, right? It spreads. So if you focus on creating individual success stories where they can have a memory of you, it works. Like some of you guys, I don't talk to every day, but some of you guys on this call, right? Drop a one on the call if you've ever had a, uh, if I've ever called you, if I ever called you one on one, right? A lot of the chair, some chairman I didn't call one on one. I've talked to some P2s. So think about it. Right? If I've had that conversation with you, that's, that's ultimately what it comes down to. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you got to get in there to spread that influence. Right? I'm going to just be honest with y'all. Right? If I would have just had, let's say, a conversation with Kari, Rax, and Jalen, and that was the only people I ever talked to my whole time in the business, no point to get to this level. If Jalen only talked to Ken, if Guy, Kayla and some other person, he wouldn't have got to that point. He wouldn't have been able to influence that many people. If Rax only talked to Ariel, Ogay, Marquise, he wouldn't have got to the point that he's at, making $100,000 a month plus more. 
right? So you got to create more success stories that uh, from you directly to spread that influence. And then you're going to be able to get more people to want to be like you. Because then people are going to be like, you got to follow him. He's a, he's a, he's a go, ah, da, 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 da. And then that's when you become the legend. That's when you become the, the icon and people are going to want to be like you. So that's what you need. You're P5000 trying to get 500 people to want to be like you. Guess what? You need to create more individual success stories. In that weak leg, quote unquote, that potential leg, how many people can literally say, I got success because of him? Right? If you look at it that way, it's going to be a completely different narrative. You got to get people to want to be like you. That's why you have to lead by example. You got to work. You got to spend some money. I'm saying you got to look good, feel good, talk good, be overly confident, man. And people are, you're going to attract people to want to be like you. Right? If that makes sense, man. So if this call was helpful in any way, shape, or form, man, let me know below. I know we talked about it a lot. I got the, got the recording um, and whatnot. And somebody, the last question I'm going to answer, um, who you studied on your journey up personally, development-wise, how'd you start providing that value? I'm going to be honest. Me personally, um, I would just put in the work and then tell people about my experiences, right? A lot of people, they don't know how to provide good value because they don't do, they don't put in work, so they don't got nothing to talk about, right? Another thing that, that that's going to help you is you always got to stay in it. You see, let's be honest. Nobody on this call launches 24-7. I don't care how hard you work, right? But even when I'm not launching, I'm launching. You want to know why? Because I always talk about it. I don't have conversations that don't have to do with the business, right? So I always have, and I keep talking about it so that I can accidentally have an epiphany. If I keep talking about it, I might say something fire and be like, damn, I never thought of that. Boom, let me go teach that. Let me go, let me go put in, let me go do it first and then teach that. But you got to stay in it. If the only time that you play basketball is when there's, it's game time, then you're not going to be as nice as the person that's always playing, right? Game or not. Right? Should I talk to customers that help lower rank leaders? A leader like a P150, if you're a P150, I'm not letting you talk to your customers by yourself. I'm talking to them, which, like I said, man, that's how you add the most value. Continue to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, and new things are going to pop up. You go apply the information you teach from your experiences, man. The more that you talk and think about it, the more perspective you're going to get. Um, if you're interested in, in getting access to these recordings, man, uh, I put them on my YouTube channel is Ray Rice. The link is in my in, in my bio. Um, I have like four trainings up there. I'm about to upload this later today, man. So you guys can go, go rewatch this, pause it, take notes, all of that good stuff, man. You know, I hope this was helpful in any way, shape, or form, man. I, 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 you know, we got 81 people on the call. We had 100. Look, man, I want you guys to go chairman, man. All the Platinum 5000s, this is the summer that you become a six-figure earner and beyond. All right, so I love you guys all. See you guys at the top because the bottom is way too crowded. And pay attention to my Instagram. I'm about to drop the link in the next couple hours. I love you guys all.